Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In the previous episode I tried to bring a probe over to Jupiter but found that it was lacking in uh, solar input uh, in order to recharge its batteries and so it died along the way and so now I have to consider what to do this time and if you can see from over here I'm intending to go to Venus. One of the reasons is that I don't want to time warp through another three years in order to uh, bring another probe to Jupiter and besides that I I think uh, we were pretty close to getting a probe to the surface of Venus so I want to try that and I mean of course that was an accident it's actually uh, I brought it in too close on the arrow capture but uh, this time we'll be able to do it with a little bit more care hopefully and I've created a lot of redundancy, a whole crap ton of redundancy in fact. And you can maybe, this is sort of, uh, well, maybe you can figure it out just by looking at it. I'll give you a moment. Okay, now uh, let me tell you. Okay, here is the orbiter. This is the lander. And this is a service module. So this is a decoupler here. This is actually a procedural stack decoupler. Uh, I use that because uh, there's no uh, regular decoupler that's uh, 1.875 in diameter. So anyway, we have all this stuff and what we're going to do is try to land this on, on Venus. It's got parachutes, it's got ample solar panel ring, but what it doesn't have is this big dish that consumes a whole lot of electric charge. And so in order to communicate with it, we're going to have to use this antenna connecting to this antenna. Uh, dip. Come on, dip. Oh, whatever. Anyway, that one right there. We've got two probe cores, identical, as you can see. This has a lot of electric charge in it, 30,000. This also has a substantial amount of electric charge in it, so if for some reason solar input isn't good enough, though we're going closer to the sun, so I have no idea why it wouldn't be, but just in case, uh, they do have a long lifespan without it. Goo Container, Science Junior, all the little experiments, I'm, uh, I'm very hopeful here, even brought a barometer and seismometer, so uh, we're hoping that this will work out. The Delta V situation is quite, quite robust, if you will. Uh, the first two stages will get us to orbit as usual, and then subsequently the third stage is a transfer stage. In fact, it has enough Delta V that it's pretty close to being able to bring us back from Venus as well. Uh, about uh, 200 short of doing both the trip there and the trip back, but uh, we won't be doing that. And on top we've got the whole apparatus here and the service module might be able to help us get into orbit around Venus so that's its main job. I don't know if it's big enough for that but we'll see. Uh, I still intend to try to aerobrake somewhat around Venus but I'm, I'm not too sure how that will work out. Otherwise we've got the rest of this to work with and this uh, we really don't need any Delta V to do the landing so if absolutely necessary we can burn the MMH N204 in this to also help us get into orbit and you know in a pinch we can even uh, well we can do all sorts of stuff let's face it the trick is to deal with signal delay right signal delay is going to be the bane of all this and whether or not I can succeed will depend on whether I can issue my commands properly. So that's the trick here. Well, with all that said, let's get this sealed up. That should be fine. Okay, so Venus 2. Uh, technically, the, the probe that we originally sent to Venus was actually the Mars 1A, I believe. But uh, that's irrelevant. Um, hmm. That seems a bit short. Hold on. Uh, let's let's reduce this stage just a tidbit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so let me save that. I think I sized it without the fairings on. Always a big mistake. All right, and yep, let's let's go out to the launch pad. Okay, so I've already done the necessary time warping to get us in alignment, both with 
the correct timing for Venus and that actually took a while I, I'm surprised I'm I think I time warped through the better part of a year and and also the inclination so as the whole thing is getting wiggly and of course we're in the dark because that's how it is but if that's the launch window that's the launch window okay so throttle is up SAS is on rocket is very wiggly Hope everything's all nice and stable in there. MMHN204 seem a little bit short actually. I don't know why we're short like uh, two and three units of each of those. But everything else seems to be topped up fine. Alright, I think uh, I think we're good to go. Let's head for Venus, trying to make a landing on that very stuffy planet. Whoa. I think I'm facing some monumental lag here. I mean, well, you saw the probe. It has a lot of parts on it. So... Okay, well, it's gonna take a while. Now, of course, the trick here is that I don't have to deal with any of the big problems that the people who really have to plan a mission to Venus would have to deal with and those primarily are the are the curious uh, curious conditions of it at its atmosphere right the extreme pressure on the vehicle which we don't have to worry about our our uh, probe being crushed like a tin can or the or the uh, what you got the actual contents of the atmosphere uh, corroding the probe Right, because uh, the atmosphere of Venus has a lot of corrosives in it. We, uh, we do have to deal with heat, of course, but not the actual heat of the planet. We're just dealing with re-entry heat. So that's a little bit different. So for the most part, I think I'll be uh, seeing you in orbit unless something crazy happens. Okay, we're coming close to the end of our burn, and since there was no drama at all with the Magni Launcher, and we've already seen it function perfectly many times now, I probably cut out everything up to this point. And it's in the dark anyway, so I don't think you miss much. So uh, that will allow me to make sure that we complete the mission in this episode. And so here we go. I have to make sure to shut off the engine at the right time. Just about right on the Delta V, so I'm quite satisfied with the way I got this optimized in the VAB. Okay, that's good enough for me. Uh, our electricity generation is zero because we haven't extended solar panels. However, we've got three days worth of battery power, as intended. Now, I think we can ditch this stage. And that would probably be a good idea. Yeah, let's do that now. Okay, it should be clear of the rest of the craft. Yes, there's our... Venus transit engine and so we're ready to head to Venus now while that burn was going on and since I wasn't recording I uh, took the liberty of making some calculations and you know honestly and these were uh, for air braking the the data I have for the atmosphere of uh, Venus seems to indicate that my initial try, uh, last time I tried to go to Venus, I tried to air brake at 110 kilometers, and that wasn't based on any calculations, that was just my own guess. But calculating the atmospheric pressure on Venus now, and where the atmospheric pressure is on Earth, where I usually air brake, uh, about 75 kilometers, it's the same. It's uh, 75 kilometers on Earth is the same as 110 kilometers on Venus in terms of atmospheric pressure. 
So I don't know why why the air braking didn't work when I went to Venus the first time. Uh, it seems like they've got the atmospheric pressure set a little bit higher on Venus in real solar system than I would have expected. Uh, but we're, we're just going to have to adjust for that. I'm not sure uh, what the discrepancy is there. Maybe my calculations are wrong too. I don't know. But yeah, it's tough though, I have to admit, to calculate the atmospheres that high accurately because um, well, uh, the, because first of all, it's not very dense at all, and so the numbers are very low. Getting good, accurate data at that altitude is very difficult, and also there are weird atmospheric effects uh, taking place because of particles from space uh, encountering our atmosphere at that altitude. So it's a very complicated dynamic there, and yeah. Anyway time to plot for Venus. Now of course we are going to have to go backwards in our orbit in order to meet Venus. So it will be... So this time arrow braking, I, I consulted my old video where I actually attempted it and judging from that old video I'm going to aim for about 220 kilometers. Now that's not accidental either, from what I've read, that's actually the interface between... Well, that's actually the end of the exosphere and beginning of the thermosphere on Venus, so... That's very, very high, but... That also seemed to be on the video where I started to get some serious drag. So, we'll go with that. Wow, this is quite remarkable. Even from out here, I've managed to engineer uh, Eve Periapsis inside its atmosphere. Actually, too deep from for what I want to do, but we're we're not going to hit that accurately at all. But this is quite remarkable since uh, we've got uh, inclination difference between us and Eve of 3.2 degrees, and we're not at the descending node. We're a little bit further away from it, but somehow I've managed to get that Eve Periapsis right in there so that's quite quite good alright so uh, we've got that let's uh, back out of this and I'm gonna ignite the engine but not actually burn it and we see that we've got plenty enough delta V for this alright I think it's time to bring the solar panels out even though it's in the dark because I always activate the solar panels while it's in the dark Yep, they're slowly coming out. You see, I've got... I told you, I've, I've overdone it with this whole probe. I've got a lot of stuff on it. There's no shortage of, of the equipment that we need. Of course, in this case, some of the solar panels are blocking other solar panels, but... But that's fine. They're on three different sections of this mission. Okay, so yep, yeah, just time warp to our maneuver node. Actually, let's have a smart ASS point to it first. That's bound to take a while. I don't even know if we have reaction power without RCS. I don't think so. Let's wait and see. Nope, it doesn't seem to be making a move. Alright, RCS on. Oh, it's using a lot. I am a little bit tired of doing sort of the porcupine version of solar panel placement, but after my Jupiter mission, I'm not going to take any chances. I don't want to run out of solar panel power anymore. Okay, I'm just going to do it myself on the... because I'm worried about... Smart ASS using way too much RCS. Okay, just waiting for the little pop-up. Of course, I probably should 
have stopped way before three minutes prior to the node, but we've got it. And so let's check. Very unstable, alright, so we need to bring in uh, one of our relights. Okay. Looks good. Okay, that didn't sound good. Next. Right. And let's make sure. Right. Excellent. Where are we? Ah, this must be the the east coast of Africa. That would be Madagascar there. Very typical when launching from Cape Canaveral and going in the orbit that I normally do. Yeah, with the orbit that I normally take going out of Cape Canaveral, we'll probably never see some of the higher latitude nations like, uh, well, most of the United States, Canada, uh, Europe, that sort of thing. Alright, we are on an escape trajectory now. And so our burn is almost done. I've turned on the main dish, aiming it at uh, Kerbin slash Earth. And we are a little bit off because of the length of the burn, so you can see a bit of a deviation there. Hopefully it won't be too far off as I try and get this as close to Venus as possible. You can see the resulting trajectory there. Very hard to get this accurate from out here given that I can't throttle this engine. Okay, here we go. Got a slight delay, nothing too much. Uh, I don't see the encounter. I'm gonna shut off now because this is gonna deviate because it's pointing at the node. Okay, well I'm not seeing the encounter that we were promised so it looks like we're gonna have to do some adjustments here. Oh well, so much for that uh, really tight thing. Uh, 100 kilometer or so. Let's see now. Don't know how that happened. It was finicky to begin with. Remember, we have a three degree inclination, so it was a minor miracle that we managed to get as close as we did. Okay, so I've decided that I'm willing to basically use up the, the stage that we've got in order to force the issue, but we ended up way off, basically. And so that's a little bit of a downer. But uh, yeah, and we're only going to get 500,000 kilometers with, uh, you know, a periapsis of 500,000 kilometers away from Eve's surface. But at least we'll have an encounter, which is more than we could say after the initial burn. You know, maybe uh, since it's an inclination change, I really should depart Earth first. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Let's get into, because inclination changes close to Earth, not a good idea. Let's, let's get out into interplanetary space first, even though it, uh, it's no guarantee that we'll be alright with that. Okay, We've got time warp here. Okay, so my supposition that doing this in interplanetary space would be easier was correct. And in fact, I've got a new maneuver node that will bring us to 214 kilometers, much, much better. Many orders of magnitude better, but, uh, and uh, it'll cost less even. So yeah, actually, no but, no but about it.
So let's get this show on the road. Uh, we do have a time delay though. That is a but. And uh, that is 12 seconds worth. Are we there yet? Gonna have to bring out this panel again. Okay, yeah. It's a very straight orbit right now, uh, locally, so it should be able to hit pretty exactly. I at least hope so. Gotta turn Smart ASS off and activate SAS instead so that it doesn't wander with the maneuver node. Looks like the burn will be a little bit short, which is better than it going long, so I'll take that. Still no adequate explanation for the discrepancy between these two numbers, given that the orbit is extremely locally straight. If it was a very curved orbit, that'd be a different thing. I could understand why there's a difference between these two numbers, but... But here, there's no excuse, really. The timing of it shouldn't be a huge factor because, of course, we're talking about an orbit that's 283 days long and we've got a discrepancy of three minutes in the point at which we burned. Okay, that's the end of that burn. Uh, let's see how close it got us. Not close at all. Okay. So, how do I do this? Well, I can manually take care of it, perhaps. Let's see. Well, no, let's, let's just let it do the rest of it. It's simpler that way. Let me give it just a hundred. See what it does with that. We do not have infinite relights, of course, but uh, there's no real harm in this case. We've got to be dumping the stage pretty soon. Okay. And 23 more after that. Do we have enough uh, room for one more relight? Oh, uh, put M in there instead of getting me out of the map mode. How many relights do we have on this thing? Four more, okay. Uh, it says 4.9. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try five. Go for it. Ah, okay. Uh, it looks like uh, we hit a minimum there, and that's because the uh, maneuver nodes started to wobble, wander. Okay. Yep, alright, uh, we'll take this. We'll make further adjustments as we enter the EVE system. Okay, I've had enough of that. Our, yeah, there's no way... Uh, well, I guess there is a way that uh, a mid-course plane change would help. 
but really we we're at one of the nodes and the target is at one of the nodes so it's not gonna be very accurate until we really get in there so let us dispense with this we no longer need the third stage and we will use the service module for further adjustments all right so here we go and I'm waiting for the delay waiting for the delay just gonna do it. yes okay very good all right Okay, see you at Venus. Alright, so here we are at Venus. Uh, 558 second time delay, periapsis 22,877. Should be easy enough to adjust that into the periapsis I want, which is about 220, I said. That might be too high, but let's not risk anything. And, you know, if we fail, we fail. We'll learn something out of it. It is not forbidden to fail here. Oh, that's a little bit too tight. 212 looks good. All right. So now we've, we've gone unencumbered. So we don't need to worry about burning too much RCS when turning. I've already issued the command to ignite this stage, so just waiting for that. Ah, uh, gotta worry about the connection too. Which reminds me, I really need to put some better satellites in orbit. I think maybe uh, next episode is going to be a huge uh, deorbiting extravaganza where I clear up some of the bad satellites and get some good ones up. Okay, so here, this is probably not going to be quite accurate because we, we've got the delay and everything, but let's go. Okay, that's off. Periapsis, not bad. A uh, little bit off. Huh, okay. Got to turn RCS on, and now we've got 18 minutes. Wow. Okay. What sort of uh, adjustment do we need to fix our periapsis? So now the question is: Is it going to delay my RCS commands? Is it even going to issue my RCS commands? Uh, I don't see RCS firing, so it must be delaying it. But it's not coming up on here. Let me wait a certain amount of time. Nope, it just didn't do anything. Okay, well we've got connection now. Alright, well that complicates matters. Guess we'll have to do this and burn a lot more RCS than I was intending. Definitely want to turn that off. SAS on, time warp a bit. Oh, uh, we have to wait the 14 hours, though. This isn't going to be 1 meter a second. Let me say 0.2 meters a second. We have a lot of free lights on this, right? 40. Okay. Yep, that did it. Periapsis, where I want it to be. Okay. Well, let's get closer before reorienting retrograde. So I'm gonna turn uh, RCS off. Got a whole day to spend before we get to Eve's atmosphere.
Okay, we better look to doing some of the basic stuff here now. Um, RCS on... Uh, the periapsis is now a bit high. Oh, I don't think it's registered my RCS command. Okay. Uh, our time delay is actually quite low. That's pretty interesting. I should point out that this is real solar system 6, not 7, so we don't have the new textures for Venus. So it still looks like Eve. I haven't tried to... Well, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, the new version of real solar system that has all the planet textures would not be compatible with the save because of module manager. And uh, the new real solar system comes bundled with the newest version of module manager, which is not what all the other mods in here will operate under and it'll probably cause a mess. Okay, so I'm going to issue a retrograde command. And so once the RCS is activated, Smart ASS will point us retrograde. We're still a bit far away from that, but it's okay. I'm also going to issue Action Group 2, which will pull in all the solar panels, and I'll see how much battery we have based on that. Of course, we don't want the solar panels snapping off in the atmosphere. Okay, it looks like we'll end up with about three days worth. Where's our periapsis? Two hours. Okay, so we can keep them closed for now while we pass through the atmosphere. As with the previous mission, I'm hoping that the tail will provide sufficient heat shielding. We'll see about that. And we should be hitting periapsis on the sunlit side of Eve or Venus. Okay, so here we go. I'm not going to adjust the periapsis any further. If we need to burn for orbit afterwards, that's fine. I mean, we might be underdoing it here, but... Well, we're about to find out. Oh, looks like we still got communications. Is that right? Possibly because we're going on a polar trajectory and Eve is not in our way. Though it will be once we get over to the other side here. We won't be able to... Oh, that's going to be tough. Hmm. I am definitely going to have to take that into consideration. And that's because we might not be able to communicate with it when we need to burn for orbit but let's find out. We've got interface with the Venusian atmosphere, apparently. Okay, but not much drag just yet. Oh darn, uh, this, this one antenna... Okay, I need to uh, command that antenna to retract. We need that antenna, absolutely. Otherwise, we won't be able to communicate with the lander. <sighs> we seem to have lost connection here. Uh, I've already sent the signal for the antenna. A little bit rough uh, going through Eve's atmosphere without uh, full time warp at this height. It's going to take a long time to get through the atmosphere. Uh oh, I see effects on this. Come on, come on, signal delay. Do something. Oh wow, we're a little bit too late for that antenna. Well, I'm not going to go time warping through this. Uh, it's a race between my signal and the atmosphere taking the antenna off. Oh, there goes that. So, so, oh, and the solar panels. Oh, I didn't think those solar panels would be vulnerable.
Okay, well, mission, well, um, the mission is not going to go as I intended it to, but we have redundancy, and so maybe we will make use of that. Basically, it seems like the solar panels on the orbiter section have gone off, so there's no way that can stay as an orbiter section uh, with the dish operational. So we can't detach it from the lander, and so we're going to have to land the lander section and the orbiter section to maintain communication with Earth. And that is the current plan. I'm surprised the uh, solar panels just uh, went off like that, even though they were retracted. Uh, excuse me for a moment as I F3 this. Okay, standard stuff. Couplers. Solar panel 4 damaged by... Well, it doesn't really read what uh, we saw with things falling off. I didn't even read the antenna being uh, knocked off. How are, how are we doing on orbit? Not great. No, not great at all. But we're hanging around this altitude for quite a while, so maybe it'll still work out. Okay, we're definitely headed back up and our... Oh, another little bit has fallen off. What is that? I mean, come on. You can't take stuff off of my ship or my probe unless you tell me about it over here, okay? It's not fair otherwise. All of the solar panels were actually in group two, group two which I used to retract them. But somehow uh, they got removed from from the vehicle all over the place. I definitely do not appreciate this. Hmm, especially this high in the atmosphere. I mean, it wasn't even high enough to get in, us into orbit, really. So it's not uh, full aero capture height. And yet, uh, here all my little bits are going off. It's not fair. Okay, but we have to take care of this now. <sighs> Long trip up again because we can't do... We can't do full-time work. Oh, look at all those things! Hey! This is the light part of the atmosphere. You can't be taking off all my solar panels here. What? What is falling off? Why do I keep seeing solar panels fly off? I mean, it's definitely taken all of the ones on the orbital portion. Whatever. Let's look, look at another one. It's like it's... It's a fountain of solar panels. I'm very unhappy about this. Ah, uh, we're still forced into physical time warp. Okay, now we've got physical time warp. Not physical time warp, but we've got full time warp. Okay, let's get to where we've got connection. Now there's our other probe, the one that ended up landing. Okay, so we've got connection now. Alright, let's see what we can do about this orbit. We're a little bit far out for this, but we've got some fuel. Okay, not too much. Not too bad at all. Uh, let's actually do a radial 
looks like the thing to do. Okay, I think that'll be about as much as the service module will be able to do safely. So we're going to have a periapsis of 622 kilometers, uh, apoapsis of 30,000. And let's get to that node immediately. And we just burn out the the service module engine, so no finesse here. I'm just going to fire now. I've throttled up. And I guess I'll wait the three minutes before it acknowledges that or is it going to acknowledge that? It doesn't seem to recognize that I've throttled up. Delay is three minutes, so I should have done it by now. Alright, whatever. Okay, I'm going to tell this to do it. It's a little bit late now, so it's not going to be accurate. Oh, I suppose I might as well give the... well actually I'll hold off on the command to give the... get the solar panels out. Just in case. Okay, we have orbit. Periapsis is pretty high. At least we wouldn't be hitting any drag at that height, even though we'd be hitting physical time warp territory. Okay, we're coming up on the end of this burn. A little bit different than the intended orbit, uh, due mainly to the fact that the burn took so long. And we also passed the maneuver node before starting it. But uh, so far so good, uh, at least the periapsis went the safer way. Instead of dipping into the atmosphere, it's even further out of the atmosphere than I had planned, which is good. That's good. And so here we are. The stage is going to run out, and that'll be the end of this. Okay, I'm going to tell this to stop doing that. And I'm going to tell Smarty SS to go off, SAS to come on and probably RCS to turn off. Uh, we have a strange imbalance between MMH and N204 so I must have misconfigured one of the engine uh, one of the fuel tanks for the engines. I don't know why we should be imbalanced at all. We've got an extra 170 units of MMH here which means that I filled this tank wrong for the Estes engine. And there's nothing I can do about that because the other tank... Well, no, there's still some room in this one. How the heck is there room in... Oh, the, no, this... Yeah, I don't know how there could be room in this one and why... Oh, because of the RCS, right. Uh, so should I send the MMH up? Doesn't seem like there's any good reason to. it just add more weight without adding Delta V. So I'll, I guess I'll just keep it off. And basically the service module has done its thing and uh, done it very well actually. Its, its goal was to bring us into a safe orbit and it did that. It did that very well. Taking stock of the situation, we have some solar panels left on the top portion. And I now have to make a decision. The, the, the choice we have here is whether to leave this in orbit as an orbiting satellite dish that will connect back to Earth and then send a separate lander here in order to uh, make the landing on Venus. Okay, go away. I keep right clicking away and it won't leave. Or we actually make the landing with this entire thing hoping to maintain connection. If we retro burn over here we should be able to bring our orbit down so that we land on this side and as long as we land on this side of the planet we will maintain communication with 
Earth long enough for us to do our science. If, on the other hand, uh, the planet decides to bring me down quicker or slower than I think it will, then we are in trouble. At the same time, we are in actually a very good orbit as a communication satellite. I mean, we are in a polar orbit. Yeah, and uh, the high inclination is very good for communications and everything. So there's that to consider. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to sleep on this. So we've gotten, we for the first time we've gotten a probe in orbit around Venus successfully. Well, partial success. Uh, we've lost some solar panels on a critical portion. We lost a critical antenna, but we are in orbit without uh, totally collapsing the whole situation. We can do science if we choose to. So in the next episode, either I'm going to decide to leave this in orbit or I'm going to bring it down and then also I'm going to be trying to beef up my my communication situation around Kerbin by first uh, deorbiting a whole bunch of stuff so we're gonna see some fireworks and then also sending up a new communication array right now this is only communicating with Pratchett Station or directly with home base so that's part of the problem and why we lose communication regularly if we put a communication array in Geosync that can communicate with this satellite. Even our current uh, Geosync satellites I don't think have the range and uh, they're also a little bit off on their electric power situation. But if we put one up in Geosync that can communicate with this that'll be much better. Uh, the blackout period would be like less than an hour per, uh, well not, yeah basically an hour per 24 so we could probably do with two of those kinds of arrays. So that's part of the plan. And otherwise we may get some science out of uh, Venus depending on how I am feeling when I decide to record the next episode honestly. This has been a very long episode uh, for me in terms of recording it because the burns have been so very long. And uh, hopefully I definitely edited out a lot of stuff so it's not so long for you. Alright, so other than that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.